Welcome to KET's online campus informational webinar. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're going to give you some information about our program and courses and then give you a chance to ask any questions you might have. My name is Abby Lane. I'm the Arts and Humanities instructor here and I teach a course called Arts and Culture. I'm joined in the office by our program manager, Beth Gauntz. Um, Beth, would you like to jump in and say hi real quick? I hope that we are able to um, uh, give you a lot of good information that will uh, help you see how we might be an actual solution for scheduling and staffing issues that you have in the electives area with our high quality world language and arts courses. So thank you for coming and uh, Abby will give you a great tour. Thank you, Beth. Uh, also joining us are our German instructor, John Kruger, and our Latin instructor, Ben Patterson, and we will hear from both of them in just a few minutes. So as, um, as Beth mentioned, one of the big reasons schools use our courses is that with us, you don't necessarily have to have a German teacher or a Chinese teacher in your building to have students in your classroom learning those subjects. Uh, you might have any number of different situations, like students who need the arts graduation requirement that don't want to take studio art or can't fit art or an arts course into their schedule, or just want to take it for college credit, for example. Um, you might have just a handful of students, even just one student, who wants to take Latin or Chinese or German, uh, or students with just various uh, different needs or schedules. So with us, schools can offer those extra courses and options without having to commit too many resources. Also, homeschools and other non-traditional students can learn subjects from expert teachers in subjects uh, their home teachers or regular teachers may not be able to cover. So here are our current offerings. Uh, arts and Culture, which fulfills the Kentucky High School graduation requirement for Arts and Humanities. Uh, Mandarin, Chinese, one and two. German 1, 2, and 3. One of the most comprehensive sequences of online Latin offerings you'll find anywhere. Latin 1, 2, 3, Literature and AP Latin, and Spanish 1 and 2. One of the big things we offer is dual credit in all of our subjects through Moorhead State University, uh, which as you may know is an unbelievable deal for students. We'll get to that more in a little bit. But to qualify for dual credit through the MSU Early College Program, students need to be juniors or seniors in high school with qualifying test scores. Uh, and you can find the full list of qualifications on our website. Students who do not meet those requirements can still take the courses for high school credit and to meet their arts or language requirements for high school. We also have uh, 101 and 102 courses in Chinese, Latin, and German through MSU. And we offer virtual physics labs which are really amazing interactive programs um, for demonstrating simulated experiments with equipment whose costs in most schools would be prohibitive. Six of those are available in iTunes. Um, they're used by quite a few schools and colleges around the country. And here are a few more big things to know about us. Uh, quality and student success are extremely important to us and we are constantly updating and improving our courses and all our online tools. Our courses are aligned to applicable standards and use best practices suggested by INACOL and others. Uh, the world language courses are approved by the NCAA. Um, we offer individual live tutor sessions and language practice and are easily reachable by schools and students. Students get lots of personalized feedback, interaction and help from our teachers and tutors. And we will talk more about those live sessions coming up in a minute. Um, online campus meets the calendar and academic approach of individual schools. In practical terms, what this means is that we start courses when you need them. Courses can be taken over a single semester, full year, block schedule, trimester. Just depends on the course and the needs of your students and the amount of class time they get uh, and all those factors. Uh, our courses use facilitators in our schools so that we have a partner in the school that we can work with. Uh, we require schools to designate someone on site to be our point of contact for communicating with students beyond what we do with our messaging and to discuss any issues and help oversee students in person. So it could be 
a teacher with a whole classroom or lab full of students in the same class, and they can be a little bit more actively involved. Uh, sometimes it's a library media specialist facilitating for just a single student or a handful of students taking different things, uh, and that works more independently. Um, but it is important, an important part of our program and helps students to know that this is a regular part of their schedule and, and follows all their regular school policies. So let's just take a look inside one of the classes for a minute. Um, this is what you see when you log into a Latin course. Um, at the top, our logo that links back to the main page. Um, up at the top right, you have your account access. Uh, that's where students can access their profiles, their grades, important information. Um, a messaging system that we use as our primary way of reaching individual students. And that's the same way that they can read messages from their teachers or send messages to their teachers. Um, at the top left, you'll find the main course menu. Different courses are organized a little bit differently, but generally this is how a student will move through a course. It has the main sections, submenus for getting around to individual lessons. Um, all courses start with a course orientation that explains to students how the course will work, how to navigate and find things, what's expected, and answers a lot of the questions that they start off with. Students have to pass a short quiz about what's in the orientation and digitally sign a couple of agreements at the beginning of the term in order to get started. So over underneath that main menu on the left side, you'll see calendar and milestones. Since we go by uh, school's calendars, um, this gives the students in that school, in that class, a very quick view of what unit or activity uh, they should be on at that moment according to their school calendar and then they can click view full calendar for a nice uh, bigger picture of their pacing and deadlines. Then at the top of the main content area, uh, you'll find the current course announcement, which is updated at least weekly. Uh, and then below that, the actual content that they're working on right at that time. It could be a reading, an activity, a video. In this view, it is a link to a Latin tutoring session. When a student has uh, a tutoring session scheduled, They'll use these links to join a private Zoom session with a teacher or tutor. And as you probably know, we're using Zoom right now. Uh, if it's your first time using it, hopefully you've found that it's a very simple and easy to use conferencing tool that allows for video chat, instant messaging, screen sharing, and we use it for all our tutoring sessions and meetings, virtual meetings with students. Uh, a little bit more about what's in the courses. Um, we have videos with teachers demonstrating concepts, uh, multimedia, multimedia instructional content, the live sessions, practice, quizzes, assignments, um, all sorts of interactive things that students do. Um, we have original videos with our teachers demonstrating and discussing concepts in engaging ways. Uh, and let's take a quick look at one of those from Latin. Salute omnes ano magister, Ben Patterson. We've reached a point in our study of Latin when we're ready for more complex sentences. One of the ways language can be more complex is through the use of clauses. In this video, we'll learn what a clause is. We'll learn a few types of clauses, and we'll focus on a particular kind of clause, the adverbial subordinate clause. First, though, we need to explain what we mean when we talk about clauses. A clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb. So Ben is with us right now. Um, ben, do you maybe want to jump in and say a few words about how you use these videos along with interactives and other, uh, other things as part of your instruction? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Abby. Um, we're able to make use of KET's professional studios to uh, produce um, high quality um, video, uh, but we also uh, offer, deliver content um, in a number of other modes, text-based, audio-based, so a wide variety there. And uh, our online 
um, learning management system allows us to provide a number of ways for students to interact with the content um, through activities. Uh, we have lots of practice activities um, uh, associated with each lesson and each video that allows student to, students to engage with that content um, and uh, interact with it. So uh, back to you, Abby, thanks. Great, thank you, Ben. Um, I'll also talk for, for just a minute about arts and culture. Um, we also use a lot of multimedia. Um, and students do a lot of short writing activities. They give them different ways of connecting with the arts and interacting with key ideas in different ways. Um, so they do a lot of blog posts responding to specific prompts in which they get to choose their own examples of things like favorite works to discuss um, Commedia dell'arte stock characters, or the influence of traditional African music on their favorite songs, or sports heroes they want to immortalize in classical Greek sculptures, um, that sort of thing. So this is just one student's blog post in which they had a chance to make up their own Renaissance band and describe what Renaissance era instruments they would include and how they would sound together. So this student um, made up a band called the Fantastic Fantasias, and used bagpipe, hurdy-gurdy, transverse flute, and serpent, uh, and had a lot of fun with making a concert flyer that really makes you want to come rock out to their Renaissance dance band. So that's just sort of a look um, at, at one sort of activity that we use uh, that gives students a chance to, to use their creativity, but also really interact with important concepts. And uh, back to those live sessions. As we talked about, we use Zoom for all our live sessions, and the Zoom chats can be accessed from within the courses. Different courses use live sessions in different ways. Um, some are scheduled for weekly conversation practice in languages, um, scheduled with students as sort of office hours meetings where we can screen share, troubleshoot, talk one-on-one, -on -one, or group discussions. Um, but it's one of the ways that students have really personalized interactions with teachers and tutors. Modern world language students can work on interpersonal communication skills via the live sessions. All students are required to participate and they have the opportunity to give personalized answers to questions using vocabulary and forms that they are studying. Uh, live sessions are also used in assessments, giving students a venue for honing presentational skills. And I would like to get uh, our German instructor, John Kruger, to add a little bit more about how he uses those in his courses. John? Hi, Abby. Uh, sure, I'd be glad to tell you about the live sessions. They're actually one of the most uh, popular parts of our course. We have tutors that speak to students uh, twice a week. Students call them up on the Zoom platform, just what we're using now, and um, speak they have a the students have a chance to interact with these tutors these tutors uh, most of them are uk students and they are learning the language themselves they are actually much farther ahead than our students would, would be but uh, they are studying german at the uh, higher levels at uk and other you know well this year university of kentucky and it's um, one of the, like I said, it's one of the most popular part of our courses. They, they um, students, our students are able to try out their German. It's, it's uh, gives them a chance to speak in the language and listen and communicate. And um, it's really fun for them to connect with someone else who's closer uh, to their age as well. And they also get a chance to talk to me, the, the, the teacher, uh, frequently, and other tutors as well. So it's a great uh, benefit to our program. Hey, thank you, John. Sure. Let's talk a little bit about um, our classes and what they look like. We're going to speed through just um, a bit more information for you and then see if anybody has any questions for us. Um, grade reports. We provide schools with regular progress reports and midterms and final reports based on the uh, dates that they request them. 
um, the high school gives the actual final grade to students, we provide a final grade directly to Moorhead for the dual credit students. And this is just an example from a Spanish course of what would be included. Um, so it, it gives a good bit of information. Uh, the current course percentage will be the last numerical column. That's the most important, that's the current uh, grade percentage. Um, but it also has the dates of the student's last access to the course, um, in case that's an issue uh, of why they, their grade might not be where it should be. You can see when they last logged in, when they last submitted an assignment. Um, and depending on the course, uh, maybe some other more detailed information. Uh, as you can see, we currently have five lead teachers plus 12 tutors. Uh, you can actually go to our website and find bios of the teachers to learn more about us. Um, by policy, we regularly check student access. Um, we have ways of communicating when there's an issue there. Um, but, but teachers are, are very involved in student engage, engagement and instruction, as well as updating content, um, overseeing tutors, reviewing student progress. Um, so I'll keep it moving, but just so you know, it's important that uh, student privacy is very important to us and we have a number of specific policies in place to protect it. That extends to our enrollment process, um, which happens on our website, and this is a look at uh, what you'll see when you first go to do that. Um, and we'll give you that link also in just a minute. And the 800 number to reach our registrar, Linda Hofacker, uh, she handles all our enrollments and can answer questions um, about signing up, logging in, all the things you need for that. But this is probably one of your big questions. Uh, so we're pleased to share some information about our in-state tuition fees for Kentucky students. Um, as you can see, tuition is based on the number of students enrolled in a course. So if you have fewer than 19, it's 100 per student. Uh, if you have 20 or more students in a course, it's 100 for the first 19, then $50 for any students above that number. Um, there's a $50 student re-enrollment fee for students who don't complete in one school year and need to retake it. And um, for dual credit, it's another $150 per course to Moorhead State. Uh, we do also have students from across the country and you can contact us for information about the out-of-state tuition. And these are the fees for our virtual physics labs um, used by K through 12 schools in Kentucky um, for $60 per school per academic year with a free trial for any teacher. Um, there's also college pricing. A lot of colleges use it. Um, remember that six of those are also available as apps on iTunes and you can get more information about this on our website. And finally, here's our contact. Um, if you've gotten our emails or our newsletters, you should have the link in your email too, but here is our website, uh, ket.org slash education slash online campus. Um, the course sampler gives a very small idea of what's in some of the courses. You can check that out on our website. You can find our course catalog, uh, registration, course info, teacher info, and much more, and about those um, physics labs. So you might also want to write down these phone numbers. Uh, our registrar, Linda Hofacker, is your go-to for enrollment, billing, login, all that important stuff. So call her if you're thinking about registering, if you have specific questions about it for your school. Um, this is the 800 number you'll find all over our site, but it's a good one to keep handy. It's 800-333-9764 and you can email her at lhofacker at ket.org. You can also reach out to our program manager, Beth Gauntz, at any time. She'll be glad to talk to you or even visit your campus uh, to talk more about um, our courses and our program. Her email is bgaunce at ket.org and her phone number is 859 
7266. We would also love to have you friend or follow or join us on Facebook or Twitter if you haven't. We are under KET Online Campus on both those platforms. And we just periodically post news and announcements, photos from school visits, uh, shout outs to our schools and students, stories or fun links relating to any of our courses, things happening in digital learning in Kentucky, all those sorts of things. So please join us there as well. And we really wanna thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I hope that's given you a little glimpse about um, what makes our program so special. 